to the channel. Today we're shooting the Life in the Limelight episode 2 with a good friend of mine, Derek Slack. He also owns his own brand, so check that out, Levels. I'll put the link in the description below. But we got Derek here. Just give us a little bit of background about yourself, man. I'm currently, I just wanna, I know the title said strength coach, but I just wanna kinda put out there, I'm not like a legitimate strength coach yet. I'm just interning, so technically I'm like an assistant strength coach. I've had the pleasure of working with a lot of knowledgeable coaches. And you know, based on my research and, and education so far, I feel like I can provide a good insight. And yeah, I go to I go to Arizona State University. That's where I'm studying. I know both of us prior vets, and you know, getting out of the service, we kind of kept that fitness mindset still. Yeah, I'm an Air Force veteran, so I was stationed in the middle of nowhere for the most part. So there wasn't really much to do out there other than you know, work out. So I started going to the gym. I had always kind of lifted in high school because I played football, but I never really took it seriously. So I started to take it seriously and just kind of fell in love with it when I was stationed out there. Um, as that kind of went along, I just kind of fell in love with teaching people and spreading my knowledge and my research to other people to allow them to you know, achieve their fitness goals. That kind of fell into play with wanting to become a strength coach, bettering these athletes and kids and, and even professionals too. What do you see yourself doing in the future? You see yourself doing this as a career, obviously going to college for it, yeah. but some people like to get that knowledge and do their own YouTube channel or take it a different route where you're coaching you know, bodybuilders or yeah. whatnot. What, what do you see yourself doing? Um, for right now, I definitely do plan on you know, becoming a collegiate or professional um, as strength coach. That's kind of the ultimate goal. But like right now, I'm you know I'm assisting at Arizona State University. I love working with college athletes. I do think it would be pretty cool, you know, maybe to get into the high school level, uh, like I said, professional level too. I'd love to get on you know the tactical side side of things, train uh, special operations right, guys, yeah. um, that'd be a lot of fun too. You know, maybe I'll start you know, YouTube or a podcast or, or something like that, so you never really know what's going to come along. Primarily just strength coach for uh, D1 University or professional is the end goal. So. Okay. Basically the military kind of got you into wanting to do this. Yep. High school you, you, you played sports or whatnot, but did you always want to do what you're going for now? Not really. So maybe about two, two and a half years ago, you know, high school and being in the military, I never, you know, I didn't want to do something if it meant that something I loved, if it meant that I wouldn't make that much money. Yeah. And you know, it's over my years in the military, and and I started to kind of learn that you know, follow your passion and the money will follow. And money really isn't a big deal for me. You know, it's it's obviously it's 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 nice. You know, everybody wants to have you know a bunch of money, but um, you know, following your passion. You know, and waking up and having your job not, not even be a job, you know, you get to wake up and do something that you love. I want to do that for the rest of my life and that's Amazing. that's the biggest thing I've learned. And, and that's the thing too, most people like they do, they go to jobs that they hate. Yeah. And yeah. they complain about it so it brings their life into a whole negative curve or whatever. Yeah, you know, and if they don't if they if they're miserable at their job, you know, they're gonna be miserable at home, uh, miserable around their family, miserable, like I said, to their loved ones and, and it's just something that I'm glad that I've learned and want people to realize that too. Do something that you love and you'll never have to work a day, a day in your life. So. How big is gold set? Oh, I mean, it's, it's absolutely huge. You know, not, not only thinking it, but writing it down because thinking of it is obviously the first step, but, but actually writing it down gives like your mind a sense that, okay, like I actually have to do this now, now that it's, I can, I can see it. It's not just in my mind, it's something that's on paper. It's something I can show other people. Definitely write your goals down, keep track of them, make sure they're, they're attainable. And that's the biggest thing, you know, with fitness, with, with your education, with, 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 whatever, with whatever, you know, your personal goals. It's important to be optimistic. It's also important to be realistic, which goes into part where like, you obviously don't want to think that you can't do something. What are some tips you can give the viewers and the subscribers about fitness? Definitely do your own research. Do a lot of your own research. You know, anything that you want to do, if you want to develop more strength, if you want to, if you want to be more powerful, um, if you're trying to get better at a specific sport, you know, whatever it may be, do your own research. You know, make sure it's all based on scientific stuff. But um, if, you know, if you're really passionate about it and you're really serious about it, you know, doing research, you know, might sound like a, a boring thing. But you know, if you're actually passionate about it, and you want to do it. You know, you're actually going to enjoy learning. What do you think about just going online, googling something, and you know, trying it out? I mean, yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, you brought up a good point. Fitness is all trial and error. So. What well, might work for somebody is, you know, might not work for you. Um, so you want, obviously want to make sure it's all it's all scientifically backed, or you know, it's from some sort of trusted resource, whether it be a certified professional, um, you know, not just some Joe Schmo on, online. Yeah, it just as you're saying, like the difference between an average person and a great person is that the great person was once an average person who actually put their thoughts 
and goals and dreams into fruition. That little thing that they actually ran with their idea rather than just sat on it and said, you know, made up excuses on why they couldn't do it. It's kind of a harsh reality, but it's, if you have an idea or, you want, or if, you're, if you're motivated to do something, you know, actually do it and stick with it. A quote I actually read, it was maybe only two weeks ago, it was that, you know, discipline is sacrificing what you want now for what you want most. What are some of your influences, whether it be other strength and conditioning coaches or just life influences? Last guy I said, Bruce Lee. Honestly, my family, um, you know, they, they support me no matter what. Shout out to family. For yeah, sure. yeah, right. The biggest thing that's kind of influenced me and motivated me is I didn't have really the best time growing up. You know, my family always did everything they could for me. We're never in a good financial position. So um, the fact that, you know, that, that kind of motivates me to be, you know, to be my best self, to go to college, yeah. um, to help other people. And you know that are maybe in those kind of positions, or you know, just people who want to, who want to better themselves in fitness or life or whatever like that. You know, I, I love it. Um, I love helping other people. And one biggest thing that I, you know, my first couple of years of, of weight training, I never really grasped the importance of, just because I'm sort of like when I'm in the gym, you know, I'm balls to the wall. You know, every day I wake up and all I want to do is get to the ground. But like I said, one thing I never really grasped the importance of is like deloading. Like it's super important. Your body. You know, when you lift heavy and when you're lifting, you know, five, six days a week, you know, it has an effect on obviously your muscles, but your, you know, your entire uh, nervous systems. You really just need a break. You know, they say every eight weeks, like switch it up or something like that. No, like, honestly, like every five weeks, take a deload a week where you're just in the gym doing something light. Honestly, I would say at most every five weeks. There's so many times where I've been, you know, bulking or, you know, trying to get stronger for, 10, 12 weeks, and then just goes, just plateaus. And every year, everybody hears about plateaus. Well, to even avoid plateaus, take those deloads every five weeks. And right. so definitely let your body rest. Recovery and rest is almost as important as just being in the gym every day. So what do you think the importance of nutrition is? It's hugely important. Um, it not only affects, you know, the way your body looks, but how you feel, the short-term and long-term health. Some advice I give for that is eat with purpose. So everything you eat, try to find some sort of purpose in that. Your, your whole grain got those complex carbohydrates that are going to fuel you throughout the day. Uh, I see your vegetables and your fruits. Um, you know, try to stick with things that are from the earth, from, you know, I don't want to say from animals because, you know, there's a lot of vegans now. Yeah. Um, no offense. The biggest thing, eat with purpose. Find that value in everything you eat. That's probably the biggest thing I can say. Because it's easy now to, to go in a store and to be able to buy like say a bag of chips and soda, right yeah. there you've already got what hundreds of calories. Yeah, so the biggest way not to eat that stuff is just don't buy it at the store. It's obviously a lot easier said than done. Don't even give yourself a chance to even to eat it um, by, just, by just not buying it. You know, go into the store with, um, like I said, at this point, sacrifice what you want now for what you want most. It's not just going to come like that. You know, you're not, you're just not going to give up foods like, uh, yeah. right away. And that's what I said like in my last video too, that when you start small eat maybe one good meal, one bad meal, one good meal throughout the day. Yeah. Then you move on to two good meals, one bad meal, two good, you know what I mean? So yeah. over time, you'll, you'll kind of kick those meals out. You know, a person who's smoked for 30 years isn't just going to go from smoking to not smoking in one day, you know what I mean? You know, most programs for quitting smoking are designed to wane, you know, the smoker off slowly. That, that and and nutrition, you know, eating poorly and obesity kind of have the same effect. Someone who actually has an issue with eating unhealthily, which is actually a lot of people, whether you want to admit it or not, they're not just going to go from eating that they love to eat to eating healthier foods. Mm -hmm. Start, you know, just replacing one meal a day with something healthy. Like you said, small little things, and uh, yeah, it's going to go a long way and it's going to add up over time. So. And with people saying that eating healthy is expensive, like yeah, people no. don't understand that your body is your shrine. Why would you put a price on it? That's an amazing point, and I guarantee the hospital bills and all the pain and all that you feel when you're 50 years old and you realize you've been neglecting your body, putting the wrong things into it, and not treating it the way it should be. That's going to be a lot more expensive, not only financially but mentally, emotionally. That great, great point. We got Derek here. We had a great time talking with him, and I want to thank you for being here, being on this series. Go ahead and check him out on Instagram. Feel free to you know send me a DM or anything like that if you're looking into getting into strength conditioning or you want to know more about it. I'm not licensed, I'm not certified or anything like that. It will be you know, here in the next couple of years. I'd, I'd be happy to share what I've learned so far from going to school for it and being around D1 coaches and, and D1 athletes. Feel free to hit me with a DM about, you know, about anything. I'd be glad to help you guys out. So there you have it. This is Life in the Lima, episode two. It's great to have Derek aboard with us. We're going to see him again soon. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time. Take care, guys.